Hey fellas, welcome back to another episode here at the Main Corps. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be with you today and I uh, want to cover a topic that uh, I've, I've recently experienced here in the last about 24 hours. So if you are new here, the Main Corps is a community for men that are digging to the core of who they really are to find out what it is that they really want and who it is that they really want to become. Please, can skip, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you as a part of the community here. So what are we going to talk about today? It's going to be the purpose of our failures. So it sucks to fail. It sucks when we fall short of a goal, when we can't accomplish a task, when we can't uh, land a date, when we can't meet a goal when we can't attain a specific outcome that we've either set out for or that we desire. It sucks. Uh, part of it is, you know, it's a little bruising to our ego, but you know, it, it, it's really tough to, tough to, to contend with a lot of the times. And um, I'm going to cover an example here that uh, I've recently experienced here in the last 24 hours, but they've been, it's been a really good learning experience. And that's really going to be the key theme here is that, you know, instead of looking at it as, you know, something, a mistake that, that I made or had anything to do with me or something personal or that there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with us, is to really look at it as, you know, a learning experience and to really try and view our failures as a way of not only the people that we surround ourselves with and how they challenge us, but how the world challenges us and, you know, how we choose to look at those things and what we do with with those things and how they let us affect us, how we uh, choose to, to to allow them to, to reshape our lives, what we learn from them. So the example that I'm going to give here today is, as I mentioned in, in, my, in a video a few weeks ago, I had recently joined online dating and on Sunday night, so this was two days ago, I matched with a girl on Tinder that was just like a total 10 and you know she just blew me away like I, I could tell that she you know she was very feminine she was very um, social she was in shape she had a good career you know she just really seemed really well put together and for me you know at least visually which guys are visual creatures visually you know it's it seemed like you know this was a girl that had kind of the whole package and um, I was really drawn to her. I was really attracted to her. And so if you're not familiar with it on Tinder, you can actually super like a person. And, you know, I kind of was on the fence about whether or not to do it, but I decided to. And, you know, lo and behold, about 10, 10 to 12 hours later, she did match me back. And so I was pretty, you know, I was super excited to see that. Waited a little bit before I, you know, sent a message, didn't want to appear too thirsty or too, too aggressive, too needy. So waited about, you know, I would say about 20, 25 hours before I, I responded. And I had actually got the idea to, um, to kind of reenact one of her pictures. So what I mean by that is, um, when I was when I was viewing her profile, I noticed that her and I had a lot of the same, you know, taste in terms of fashion, and you know, I could tell that she that it was a girl that had really good taste, and I consider that for myself that I have good taste. I dress well, I take good care of myself. I have a you know a f taste for the finer things in life, but you know that's that's just kind of who I am, and I could tell that that was something that she had. That's why you know she struck me as as being sort of the the complete package, so to speak. A uh, few years younger than me, but, you know, again, really drawn to her. When I was reading her profile and looking at her pictures, you know, there were a couple of things that really stood out to me that were similar in, in how she carried herself and, and how she dressed. So to try and get a smile out of her, I, I reenacted one of her pictures. So like the whole context, like the whole background, the whole layout, like everything and went out in the freezing tundra here in Nebraska to take the picture. I was freezing my fucking ass off trying to take this thing. I was out there with a the tripod. Just, it was just ridiculous. I'm, I'm now just saying it now. It just sounds kind of ridiculous. But I thought, you know, hey, 
I, I knew that this girl had, you know, a lot of choice. And, you know, in online dating, girls have a lot more choices. There's guys that are messaging them all the time. You know, they're in an abundant place and, and you're operating really in their terms on dating websites. It's important for guys to know that. So, you know, even with that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something here that is gonna stand out, right? So instead of just the normal hey or hi message, my goal was to really just make her smile and to do so in a way that showed that I was not afraid to show her um, that I that I took the time to, to look and, and review her profile, but to also just kind of put myself out there in a, in a silly way, to be honest. And my intentions were, were great, actually. Um, you know, and I still think that. The problem is, is that I went out and took the picture, you know, and here we are 20 or whatever hours later after she, she matched. And I came back and I was all excited. It looked really good. And I went to go and send it and realized that on Tinder, you can actually only send like bitmojis from Snapchat, which I don't even, I don't even know what the hell that is because I don't use Snapchat. I don't know what the fuck that means. And then you can also use um, GIFs. So I had an image that I wanted to upload and then send to her. So neither of those two options fit an image. And, you know, it makes sense why you can't upload your own images on Tinder. I think, you know, there's probably been plenty of misuse of that. So I understand why. But um, I got caught up in the moment. And, you know, what ended up happening is I sent her a message. It, it said that she was planning on being a teacher, that she wanted to be an elementary teacher, which that again, for me, I was just like, yes, you know, I'm, I've always kind of had a thing for, for teachers. And um, I mean, in a healthy way, of course. But you know, I, uh, I really appreciated that about her. So what I did was I sent this message that says, hey, Ms. whatever her name was, and I have a question, or I'm stuck on this math problem. Can you, can you help me out a little bit? I thought it would be a little bit creative and you know, kind of cute, whatever. Um, again, talking about this is just, I'm, I was just stupid. So allow me to, to, to go with it. But anyway, I sent her this message that was just like, hey, um, I'm stuck on this really tough math problem. I think if we both work together on it, we'll figure it out. And so she said, and she responded really quick, actually. She goes, okay, what's the problem? And I was like, okay, that, you know, she didn't really seem super enthusiastic about it. And I, I kind of was already like, shit, man, but I had to go with it. So what I did was I sent this message that basically described a situation where her class needed to compare two photographs of her and I in like kind of a who wore it best. And the reason I did that was because there's this real distinct hat that she's wearing in her first profile picture that I also own. And it's not one that you see regularly. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty unique hat. So again, this is why she stood out to me. And when I went to go reenact the photo, uh, I wanted that to be something that was memorable and would bring a smile to her face. So my intentions were good, but I created this, this kind of short narrative about, you know, the need for her phone number so that I could send over the picture because I couldn't really send it through the chat. And here we are two days later and it's, you know, I haven't heard anything back from her and it sucks. Like I feel like shit because of it, but you know, I learned that, you know, I didn't really, I kind of just went for the number, which I would, I would, I would always recommend doing. We should always go after what we want as men, you know, fearlessly kind of put our nuts on the chopping block. Really, that's what it is. And just go for it, right? Well, you know, in retrospect, I did get caught up in the moment and I didn't really build any rapport. I just really just kind of went directly for it. And she said all of three words and my texts, you know, I got like three or four of them and they're a little long. And I haven't responded, so I want to be clear about that. She hasn't responded either, and, and, and I'm not going to try and engage it and try and force a response. I mean, I can tell by her actions now two days later that um, I'm probably not going to hear from, me, from her, and I fucked it up. So that really sucks, but instead of you know getting down on myself and being pissed off or getting upset with her, what I'm really doing with it is to try and take a look at it as a learning opportunity to say, hey, 
next time that you're in this situation, you know, take a step back, understand how, you know, this would maybe be received or perceived by somebody else and you know slow down and build rapport with somebody you know especially with women they got to feel safe they got to feel comfortable and you know i think i was just maybe a little too aggressive too soon and it's i'm a total stranger one of probably many that are messaging her left and right on uh, on tinder so you know i'm i'm just dis, i'm disappointed i'm discouraged you know i did forgive myself because i know that my intentions were really good and i didn't plan to not be able to send the photo so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really trying to, to look at it as a, as a learning experience and, you know, kind of accept the fact that I, I won't hear from her and it sucks. And she, you know, who knows, like it may be a sign of a higher power that, you know, we're not supposed to really get to know each other here. But, you know, the, again, the moral of this is to really take your, take your failures and, your mistakes in stride and understand that, you know, you're being tested and it's, it's, it's a way for you to, it's an opportunity for you to kind of take a look at it and say, okay, well, how did I show up? What does it really mean to me? You know, how, how would I, how would I receive this information if I was the other person? Um, you know, it, it's just, it's taking a, a 10,000 foot view instead of getting all in our head or being in attack mode, you know, just really understand that like, hey, you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some. I'm happy that I put my nuts out on the chopping block. You know, I'm happy that I went for it. I'm happy that, you know, I'm fearless enough to do that. But I, I know that this interaction was something that I was, I mishandled because I didn't build rapport and I, I just got caught up in the moment. So you know, take your time and, and be patient with yourself. Be patient with your progress. Understand that, you know, we all make mistakes. I'm here telling you guys about these failures and, uh, you know, it's, it's all in an effort to make sure that, you know, you understand that you're not the only one that, that fails and, um, and that has these challenges. It happens to us all and it sucks, but you know, the only thing that we can do is learn from them and, uh, move forward and, you know, make decisions, in accordance and self-correct you know, in the future. So that's how we become better. It never stops. The progress of becoming the best version of ourselves is ongoing, it, it, it never ends. And we need to understand that it's, it's something that we're always going to be moving towards. You know, the world's gonna test us, women are gonna test us, people are gonna test us in business. And it's what we decide to do with those, it's the meanings that we associate to those things in our life that really make the biggest difference. So I hope that's a message that really helps you as you set out for your day to day. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate uh, all the comments and uh, all you gentlemen sharing your journey. Continue to help build the community. If you have a challenge or anything that you would like either some advice on or you would like me to cover in the channel, please send me an email at project at gmail.com and I will cover it in a future newsletter. Also, if um, you know some people that you would either benefit or be really good contributors to our, com our community here at the Man Corps, uh, please like the video and share the video on the channel with anybody that uh, you think would uh, either benefit or add value to us. So thanks again, gentlemen. Have a great day. I appreciate you joining me today. Cheers.